Hello, everyone. It's time for Van of Chicagoland Stories, the podcast. I'm your host, Pico Stanis. This is episode 210, season 9. Today's date is April 1st, 2023, uh, April Fool's Day. <laughs> and welcome to the show. On today's program, I will talk about two things. Uh, number one, I will talk about the Club El Bianco Italian restaurant that was located on the southwest side of Chicago. And also Chicago sportscaster Bill Frank, who uh, did the sports on WLS TV, uh, Channel 7 in Chicago, also WGN TV, Channel 9, also in Chicago. <laughs> so uh, talk about my memories of watching him on television, and uh, it'll be a lot of fun. This show will be a lot of fun, of course. Right now, the program will go into commercial break. And this program is brought to you by Vix Sinex Nasal Spray. <laughs> and here's a commercial from 1976. And I remember this commercial very well. So sit back and enjoy, and I'll be right back with the program. Thank you, everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, sales for the third of Eight hours and four minutes. Amazing. <laughs> Nine hours and six minutes. Fantastic! Introducing remarkable new Vicks Sinex long-acting nasal spray. Unlike regular sprays, new Sinex helps unblock stuffy noses and decongest sinus openings up to ten hours. Tied up! 20- ten hours? Incredible! The game? No, my nasal spray. Sinex long-acting nasal spray. New from Vic. Okay, everyone, I am back. I hope you enjoyed the commercial for Vix Sinex nasal spray. This pro- this product is still around. Excuse me. Uh, it's powerful stuff. I tried it myself, and uh, you know, I always get a stuffy nose, you know, whenever any weather like that. So at least everyone does like that. Like that. So like I said before, it's still available. You can buy it at uh, any drugstore, Walgreens, Osco, CVS, uh, Amazon, or Walmart, whatever, Target. You know, it's, I don't know if it's changed a little bit, maybe a little, you know, because Vix uh, is a good company, uh, you know, like the vape, vapor rub, oof. <laughs> you know, you put it on your chest and all that, that stuff is powerful. But it really works. It really does. Uh, I haven't had that since I was a kid. You know, one time I had a bad cold, and I had to stay home from school, and my mom rubbed it on my chest like that. And uh, and they said, oh, this stuff stinks. It's terrible. And she goes, no, it's it's okay. And she was right. It, it really works. So uh, Vix uh, also makes uh, cough medicine, like uh, Formula 44. Remember that? So I think it's still wrong. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, okay. Uh, at the beginning of the program, I said I was going to talk about the Italian restaurant, Club El Bianco Restaurant in Chicago. Also, Chicago sportscaster Bill Frank. Before I get started, I'm going to t- uh, give you a health update about me. Uh, I got the results from a doctor, regular doctor that is. Uh, everything is fine. Uh, blood pressure is good. Cholesterol is good. Heart rate is good. Uh, I had a PSA done. I won't say uh, what it is, but it's good news. It did go down. So the Xtandi, that medication I take for the spot on my rib, it went down. But I'm not cancer-free yet. I'm waiting for the urologist to declare it. So uh, one uh, bad thing, uh, well, my glucose is a little high. And uh, so uh, that's probably part of it. And because the reason is my calcium is high, a little high. And the doctor suggested I speak to the urologist because it may be due to the medication that I'm taking for the prostate cancer, you know, to for it lowering the PSA. It could be the Orgovix or it could be the Xtandi. So we don't know. So I have to wait for him. They fax the results, faxing. Do they still do that here? <laughs> they fax the results, you know, the test results to my urologist and see what he says. I might see him before April 18th. Maybe wait till then. And uh, I don't know. Maybe get treatment. 
in the form of a pill or uh, go to the hospital. I, I don't know to have it lowered. Have it a little lowered. Uh, my kidney functions tad high, a little bit, but I don't think it's something to worry about. It could be caused by that. So we'll see. But uh, that's the good news. Oh, and yeah, so that is the good news. We'll see. And uh, we got, I got 17 more days to go <laughs> to see them. But I will take another blood test before I go see my doctor, my urologist, that is. So, you know, it's better to take a second one just in case. Okay. All right. So let's get started with the show. Right now, I'm going to talk about uh, Club El Bianco. Yeah, I never talked about this on the show. Uh, I don't know much about this restaurant, you know, to, uh, but a lot of people in social media do, and they remember very well. And I never went there, and I wish I did, because it sounded wonderful. And it was an old fashioned Italian restaurant. It was located at 2747 West 63rd Street in Chicago in the Marquette Park neighbor, neighborhood. And uh, it, feat- it uh, featured a lot of Italian uh, meals, they have wonderful cuisine like that. And uh, they call it uh, the Special Fiesta Dinners. And the owner was, uh, his name was Henry Bianco. I didn't find much uh, information about him. All I know is uh, he opened the restaurant in 1948. And uh, he had a very novel idea. So, uh, and he had like deluxe uh, family dinners, like, uh, and it should be, it was served like for special occasions, like a birthday, a holiday, or just any occasion. And the, the, the dinners were, of course, like family style. So you, you need as much as you like, which is they still do that somewhat today. If you are invited to like me going to a wedding, like a Greek wedding or a baptism, you know, like have that and you just help yourself. And they had all kinds of wonderful, wonderful uh, Italian dishes. And I found uh I found a menu of that place, and then uh, I found a picture of the place uh, outside and inside. And it says here, according to that, uh, the atmosphere was kind, it was kind of rustic, and there were uh, the tiles were green and red, and the stools are green. Oh boy, I would love to see that. <laughs> and uh, you know, it's. They didn't have like a private rooms, not really, but uh, I guess you could reserve something, you know, if you do that. Uh, but they had a great uh, selection of wines, like, uh, for example, Asti Spumanti, Fraschiti, maybe Chianti, all that, something like that around there. And uh, so they had the food carts. It was a special food carts. And uh, the funny thing about these food carts, uh, it was a little Sicilian donkey. <laughs> so uh, he's probably cute. Oh, well, he's not a real donkey. <laughs> I don't think so. He probably smelled. <laughs> and so um, he probably uh, served, uh, let's see, for example, uh, probably uh, all kinds of uh, cheeses and nuts and pastries like that. So that sounds wonderful. You know, uh, probably, you know, like probably snacks or d'oeuvres, you know, before your meal. And a lot of people visited the restaurant, you know, from all over, from the neighborhood, uh, probably north side, south side, from the city, probably famous people. You know, they heard about uh, this place. Uh, the, pre, the, pre, uh, the reason was there was a church, a Catholic church that was across the way, uh, not too far from the, and not too far uh, from the restaurant. And, and and probably parishioners visit there frequently, you know, after church and all that. So that sounds great. And uh, let's see what else. So I did find a menu of the of the restaurant 
you know, we'll tell you right now what what was on the menu. So here we go. Okay. The, well, first they had uh, antipasto, which is normal. They had that, uh, if you'd like. Uh, also, hot, gar crisp garlic bread. Oh, that sounds good. <laughs> that sounds wonderful. And uh, let's see what else. They also had the soup, you know, probably minestrone, I would imagine. But the, the Italian uh, items they had were like, for example, spaghetti, homemade pasta, ravioli with ricotta cheese, baked pasta uh They had uh, pork chops, tenderloin tips, you know, with uh, mushrooms and wine sauce, mm. chicken livers, saute and wine, if you like that. Also served uh, prime rib. Of beef, ooh, you know, club steak, beef ten tenderloin. It was like a filet mignon, say, served with a big potato. Also, uh, they also had seafood, like for example, uh, French fried shrimp, uh, baked lake trout, uh, deep sea scallops, frog legs. Oh boy, that's uh, some people like it, some people don't. Uh, large African lobster tail. Uh, also, they had chicken. They had fried chicken, chicken a la cacciatore, chicken Vesuvio, a whole stuffed squab, you know, with, step, uh, with special dressing, eggplant uh, parmigiana, and also veal scallopini and veal parmigiana. Oh, I love veal parmigiana. I really do. And uh, also they had desserts, of course, you know, the usual uh, cookies, pastries. Uh, I don't know if they serve tiramisu, probably. Homemade spumoni, sherbet, or ice cream, fruit basket, and a nut bowl. I love tiramisu. That stuff is awesome. <laughs> okay. So that's a, that was a part of the plan, you know, with the Fiesta dinners. As for the restaurant, I don't know when it closed. I have no idea. Probably sometime in the 80s. I would imagine around, around then, uh, maybe it was changing uh, like slowly. So uh, I guess uh, as for the owner, Henry Bianco, I don't know if he's still alive or not. I have no clue. Uh, I used to, that neighborhood, uh, I had a friend of mine who lived, the, I had a couple of friends who lived there at the time. And also uh, my when my uncle was alive, he lived in that area. And he took us uh, the first time for pizza. And of course, uh, it was Little Joe's Pizzeria. And that's located at 63rd Street and on the corner of Richmond Avenue. And I had a friend of mine from school that lived on the same street. And, he, and my uncle took my mom and my brothers. Uh, my, my dad was working at the time. And we had pizza there for the first time. It was delicious. Oh, we miss it so much. It was the best thing I ever had. Uh, I'll talk about Little Joe, Little Joe's Pizzeria someday, like that. I know it's uh, no longer there in that uh, location. Uh, they have a couple locations uh, southwest on the so southwest suburbs. I think one in Tilly Park or New Lenox. I think one of them closed. I think Tilly Park. I'm not sure. And I don't know how the pizza is now. I've never had it there. Because it's a little far, it's a little out of my way, but uh, the pizza over there was awesome. It really was. It was wonderful. So uh, the moment I posted about Club El Bianco uh, on social media, it goes crazy because people miss this place. They love the food. Uh, some people work there. Um, it's one of those places that uh, was uh, infallible. Is uh, nothing was wrong with it. it was, the food was perfect. It uh, it was delicious, and uh, people people kept going there all the time. You know, they went, they they loved it. So uh, that's that <laughs> for that. <laughs> okay. So uh, right now I'm going to talk about uh, uh, Chicago sportscaster Bill Frank. But before I do, I'm going to take a quick break, and I'll be right back.
Thank you, everyone. Okay, everyone, I am back uh, after a quick break. And right now I'm going to talk about uh, Bill Frank. Uh, I remember him very well. I used to watch him all the time on Channel 7, also Channel 9 in Chicago. And uh, you don't hear much about him late, uh, lately, uh, but uh, he's uh, he was part of the uh, WLS team. You know, the eyewitness news team, that is. And that was, uh, he started in 1968. So uh, right now I'm going to talk about his biography, and I'll get to that in a, in a moment. So let's see. Uh, he was born July 31st, 1926. Uh, he was, uh, he was uh, from Elkhart, Indiana. I think he's born there, I, I imagine. And uh, he started as a sports announcer there in high school. So yeah, that's great. And uh, he served in the U.S. Navy in 1946. Uh, did, uh, did broadcast sports and while he was in Guam. And then he returned from the Army, and uh, he's, he went to Northwestern University. And uh, from 1947 to 1965, he was the radio and TV sports announcer for um, let's see, uh, for like a, a radio station uh, was a uh, W-E-A-W, and that was based in Evanston, Illinois. Never, I'm not very familiar with that uh, radio station. So, uh, but now it's W-K-T-A. And uh, so that's based on Evans, in Evanston, Illinois. And uh, other uh, radio stations as well, such as uh, Downstate, uh, also in Saginaw, Michigan, Lima, Ohio, uh, Louisville, Kentucky. And then he landed back in Chicago for WCFL. And uh, I think he started around 1965. Yeah, right after that. Uh, yeah, like in the mid-60s. He, uh, he was with, uh, what was his name? His name is, I can't think of his name, Milo Hamilton. Yes, oh, it just came to me. <laughs> Remember, he did for the Cubs. <laughs> like that. And uh, he was there for a while. And then in uh, 1968, WLS, uh, they, ch they were from WBKB to WLS TV. They changed that. They wanted to uh, create a eyewitness news team, you know, a very uh, special uh, news team. I think it's one of the first. And uh, that consisted of Fahey Flynn, Joel Daly, and John Coleman. Uh, Fahey Flynn and Joel Daly co-anchored the news. John Coleman did the weather. And then Bill Frank did the sports. So, and uh, John Coleman used to call him Frinky. <laughs> I remember that. And uh, they were, uh, it was very successful. And people watched them every day, you know. Uh, but they loved watching them. They were very popular. Then, uh, especially John Coleman and Bill Frank, they were a little. Uh, they had a sense of humor compared to Faye Flynn. Joe, they they were serious, especially Faye Flynn. He doesn't joke around. Maybe behind the scenes, I don't know. But John Coleman, of course. Uh, someday I'll talk about him. You know, he had the crazy maps and all that, and. Uh, well, Bill Frank, he was just a regular guy. You know, he just did his job. You know, just uh, that's what every, everyone who talked about him rem and remembered him, that he was, uh, you know, it, he was just nothing special. He was, uh, just did his job. <laughs> and uh, that was great. And then um, in 1979, I don't know, he, uh, there was some conflict or something like that, and um, either got fired, or I don't know what happened <laughs> exactly. And uh, so, uh, I, yeah, I guess he got fired, and then uh, he worked at ABC in New York for a bit, and then uh, 
And then he landed a job at WGN, which was great. And uh, so I've uh, so he he did the sports, and he was with John Drury at the time. He did the news uh, at the nine o'clock news like that because it started in nineteen eighty, and Tom Skilling did the weather, which he still does to this day. <laughs> So that's that's great. Um, and he was there until 1984, but he didn't, he didn't officially retire until 1990. So he was like on the payroll, but he, didn't, uh, he was probably there, probably filling in or just, uh, you know, did a spot or two. And then that was that. Okay, so right now I'm going to play a segment of uh, that features Bill Frank doing the sports. This is from uh, April 15, 1982, on the 9 o'clock news on WGN TV Channel 9 in Chicago, courtesy of Fuzzy TV Memories. And it's by uh, Rick Klein. Thank you, Rick. Uh, from the Museum of uh, Broadcasting. <laughs> so just sit back and listen to him, and it's, it takes you back to a nice era, you know, when, when you did sports like that. Okay. When, not me, I mean, when they did it. <laughs> okay, so here's Bill Frank with the sports. And I'll be right back after this segment. Thank you. All right, first tonight, hockey. We're in round two of the Stanley Cup playoffs. The Blackhawks are at St. Louis. They're trailing right now. The Blues lead 3-2. They're in the second period. The first period belonged all to the Hawks. Tim Higgins. Scores with a minute and a half gone to put the Blackhawks out in front. We hope to have the tape for you. There it is. And Tim Higgins scores. The Blackhawks lead 1-0. Five minutes later, Dave Hutchison beat Mike Lewitt with a long slap shot. It was 2-0. St. Louis has dominated the second period. Wayne Babbage got the, hawk, uh, the puck pass Murray Branneman for this goal. And the Blues have taken a 3-2 lead. One final is in. Boston beat Quebec in the first game of the best of seven series. The Rangers lead the Islanders in the third period, and they are just starting in Vancouver. Well, the White Sox continue to roll. They beat the Red Sox 8-4 in Boston today. They swept the three-game series. The new faces are doing the job for the White Sox. Steve Kemp hit this two-run homer to make it 3-1, put the Sox in front to stay. And Tom Pachori continued to swing a hot bat. He had three more hits today, is 12 for 19 this year. Greg Luzinski doubled in a run later in the game. Every White Sox starter had at least one hit. Dennis Lamp got the victory with relief help from Jerry Kuzman. Now the White Sox will come home to face Baltimore tomorrow night at Comiskey Park. And if the weather holds, and let's hope it does, the Sox will be the last team in the majors to play their home opener. The Cubs were swept by the Cardinals this week. St. Louis won it 3-1 today at Wrigley Field. The Cubs fell behind early. Tom Hurd tripled, came home on a short sacrifice fly by Keith Hernandez. A great play by Larry Boa, but he could not prevent the run. The Cubs had only four hits, but they were robbed a few times. Her grad Boa's line drive. Lonnie Smith went to the wall in left center field to rob Bump Wills. The Cardinals then scored again in the fourth. Bird ready again. There's the line drive into right field. It will get two runs home. The throw will be cut off by Buckner. Tries to go back to short and did not get him. He got in the back door. St. Louis padded the lead in the fifth. Do a payoff here on Lonnie Smith. Tommy Hur will be next. There's a drive to left. Ball is going to be gone. It's over everything. George Henrik also homered for St. Louis, and Steve Murrah breezed to his first victory of the season. He lost his shutout with two outs in the ninth. There's a drive way back. It might be out of here. It could be. Keith Marlin's fourth home run, but the Cubs lose 6-1. to one. They'll play in Pittsburgh tomorrow. I want to remind you that our telecast starts at 11.30 tomorrow morning. Elsewhere, Philadelphia, will you be up, John? Elsewhere, Philadelphia beat the Mets in 13 innings. The Pirates over the Expos. Los Angeles and San Diego are just underway. In the American League, Detroit over Toronto. Minnesota hit four home runs and beat Oakland. Cleveland down Milwaukee behind Burt Blylevin and Seattle and California. That's a late start. 
Well, the sting has signed, guess who? Arnold Stefanogin for one year after he threatened to retire. So he'll be in action Saturday when the sting take on Portland in the home opener at Wrigley Field. And that's good news for soccer fans. Arnold didn't mean it, did he? No, he didn't. It's just like I told you, didn't I? You told us that, <laughs> Well, these soccer players are going to be just like all the other professional athletes now. They're learning all the little tricks. Well, <laughs> we'll have a word on income tax when we come back. Okay, everyone, I am back. I hope you enjoyed the uh, segment for uh, from for Bill Frank, who did the sports on WGN TV Channel Nine in Chicago. Uh, that voice, hmm? yeah, he still missed this day, and it was wonderful. That was wonderful. That really was. Uh, after he retired in 1990, uh, he volunteered at the Mitchell Museum of the American and Christian Science Reading Room, and. Uh, and uh, you know he did that. He kept him busy and like that. And then, um, let's see, he passed away on July first, two thousand five, in Evanston, in in, uh, in Evanston, Illinois. He was a seventy eight. And uh, so you don't hear much about him like that. I remember sportscasters from the seventies. Uh, most yeah, most of the seventies. There was uh, Greg Gumbel from Channel Five. Uh, also, Tim Weigel did that. Then he moved to Channel 7. And uh, also, do you remember, uh, I don't know if you remember Bruce Roberts on WBBM TV Channel 2. You know, he had the wild uh, plaid jackets. <laughs> he was wearing that. Like, like a ni nice, he seemed like a nice man. I used to watch him. Uh, I like to, maybe I'll talk about him one day on a, on a podcast episode. Uh, Bruce Roberts, that is. Uh, I find him interesting, you know. So that'd be a lot of fun. And uh, so that's the, let's see what else. So I, I guess that's it. <laughs> you know, sport, I mean, sportscasters today, we have wonderful sportscasters, you know, that do cover, they do coverage on the Cubs, the White Sox, Chicago Blackhawks, Chicago Bears. Chicago Bulls, of course, and, you know, all of them. They do a fantastic job of doing that, you know, doing the play-by-plays and do, and then um, inject a little humor while they're talking. <laughs> you need that. You don't want some uh, boring person. No, no, no way. Okay. So that's it for this, t t for this program. Uh, Today I discussed uh, the Italian restaurant club El Bianco. Uh, that it, yeah, the restaurant uh, club El Bianco, and also Chicago sportscaster Bill Frank. Uh, I will do another podcast episode probably Tuesday. We will see. And uh, this pro this podcast will be uh, published later on today. Uh, whatever podcasts are available: Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify. Amazon Music, uh, Breaker, Overcast. Also, it'll be on my YouTube channel, uh, which will be Van Chicago Land Stories. Uh, it's much easier for people to access it. People ask me all the time, and they like listening to that. They like to go to YouTube. Also, it'll be posted on my social media accounts, uh, Facebook and Twitter. Also, on my blog, vanishchicagoland.blog. You can find that there. <laughs> So uh, we'll see what I'll talk about next next time. You know, so, uh, so you ever heard of writer's block? I got podcast block. <laughs> I don't know if it, is there such thing as that? No, I don't know. Okay. So this is Pete Costanz, your host of Van Chicago Stories, the podcast. Uh, thank you again for joining me. Everyone have a great weekend. Uh, the, weather, the weather was a little rough yesterday. But uh, this weekend was going to be, it's going to be nice, uh, especially tomorrow. It's going to be beautiful. So just enjoy it. All right. So here's bye-bye for me. And here is Ray Rayner saying bye, bye, bye with a little traveling music. So long, everyone, and take care. We have to go. Bye, bye, bye. <laughs>